Quicksilver is toxic. It affects the nervous system and kidneys through air, water and food. It can reach even the unborn in a mother's womb. Quicksilver pollutes the environment for generations to come. Mercury is Quicksilver. India in the 21st century. A country on the fast track to economic prosperity. But like most developing nations, the environmental costs of this growth are being ruthlessly ignored. Toxic elements are being used freely in a wide range of products, services and industrial processes. Among these, is one of the most toxic elements known to mankind, mercury. Mercury is a silvery, odorless and highly volatile heavy metal which is in liquid form at room temperature. Mercury never breaks down and tends to persist in the environment cycling through land, air and water and traveling across the globe. China, the world's largest consumer of mercury, with India being the second, houses 16 of the 20 most polluted cities in the world. Mercury from China's more than 2,000 coal-fired power plants soar high into the atmosphere and around the globe on what has become a transcontinental conveyor belt of bad air. China is already believed to be the world's largest source of non-natural emissions of mercury. According to a recent study by the European Commission, an estimated 3,700 metric tons of mercury is purchased around the world each year for various industrial purposes. Mercury and its compounds have found usage in several applications and processes of everyday life, ranging from home appliances to industrial units for industrial usage, mercury is found in coal-based thermal power stations, chloralkali plants, waste incinerators, mercury streetlights, batteries and electric appliances with thermostats. It is also used as a coolant for nuclear reactors. The health and environmental devastation that large-scale mercury exposure can wreak is symbolized by what is known as the Minamata tragedy. Between 1932 and 1968, Chiso Corporation, a company located in Kumoto, Japan, dumped an estimated 27 tons of mercury compounds into the Minamata Bay. But it wasn't till 1956 that the effects of this lethal exposure became apparent. An estimated 3,000 certified cases of the disease have been singled out so far but sources predict there to be over 10,000 affected patients. The Minamata poisoning has become an almost symbolic representation of man's abuse of the environment. The Indian government has so far been unable to compile any comprehensive data on all the uses of mercury in the country. The heavy metal and its various forms are also under the free licensing policy of the government. India is the second largest uh, user of mercury and we are a net importer. We don't mine any mercury here. Every bit of mercury we use is imported. And surprisingly, it's one of the only countries of this size which does not have any regulation for mercury usage or import. It's very easy for anybody to walk out into a chemical market in a city like Delhi and buy a flask of mercury, which is totally astounding because in nowhere else in the world can you buy mercury openly. It is uh, for this reason that we need a policy initiative because uh, as the globe is shifting out from mercury to non-mercury uses, uh, we have to create the demand for non-mercury uses here and we need a clear, clear policy signal to do that. In most of the developed countries, the use of mercury in various products is either banned or regulated. In fact, India is one of the largest importers of the heavy metal from Europe.
One of the biggest threats posed by mercury happens through bioaccumulation. This simply means an increase in the concentration of a substance from the environment into an organism. Mercury that finds its way into an aquatic environment gets converted into methyl mercury. This extremely toxic substance is bioaccumulative in nature and travels up the food chain. Hence, most fish-eating societies like the ones at Minamata and Niigata are at higher risk over other populations. Humans are exposed to mercury even in the safety of their home. Mercury is found in lighting appliances, mercury thermometers, light switches, batteries and even certain cosmetics. Garbage dumps and landfill sites have been recorded to have some of the highest contamination levels found anywhere. A shocking fact here is that most of the waste at these sites comes out of our homes. New and improved substitutes of mercury have been discovered and created. Digital thermometers are safer and more effective. Use of CFL bulbs and mercury-free switches drastically reduce the outlet of mercury into the environment. But on the flip side, these bulbs are based on mercury and are thus a potential source of emission at the household level. The most significant changes will only happen once industries shift to using non-mercury products. Some of these changes could be in the form of chloralkaline plants, shifting to membrane-based technology, switching from tilt switches to mechanical or micro switches, shifting from an artisanal gold extracting process to non-mercury electrolytic process and also to look at more viable mercury-free solutions for energy-efficient lamps. A major health concern is the presence of mercury in our schools and colleges. In a recent study, it was found that 15% of students in Kolkata's selected schools and intermediate colleges have played with liquid mercury, and an astounding 46% of them have held it on paper. A shocking 8% were even found to have inhaled it out of curiosity. Mercury compounds in these institutions are disposed either into the general waste stream or in the sink. But what was most disturbing was that 70% of the